right? We recognize by this sign that there's information that we don't have. There's private information that we don't have. We immediately rest recognize that this sign is nothing more than a posture, right? This sign is, is, is smokescreen. I mean, it's obvious, but that's why I use this example. We recognize that this is merely posturing, right? If this was poker, this would be the worst bluff ever. Like, I know you're bluffing. And not only do I know, I, like I know, I'm betting, I'm going all in that you're bluffing, right? What he says is, my father was killed by ninjas, need money for karate lessons. So we recognize immediately that this is posturing, right? We recognize that since it's posturing, that information is limited. We recognize that it's not only just that this information is limited, but this particular information is private. Only he knows what he's going to do with it. So, what do I do? If I want to figure out what this information is, the only way I can make an assessment is to infer from his actions what his intent actually was. So, I give him the dollar, I pull around the corner, I get out of my car, I break out the binoculars, and I watch him. He walks over, I see him with the dollar in his hand, he leaves the sign down, he goes over to the nearest um, um, McDonald's, he buys a dollar sandwich, he comes back out, he eats the sandwich. Well. Based on him eating the sandwich, let's say I didn't see the exchange of currency for the sandwich, um, I can infer that he used my dollar to buy a sandwich. I tried to be charitable, I didn't want him to do drugs or alcohol. Um, so uh, let's imagine that he used the dollar for that. So I infer because you know I see him walk in McDonald's after I give him the money, and I see him come out with a sandwich and eat it, I never see the money exchanged. I infer that it was my dollar that led to that. Right? His real intent was not to, to kill ninjas. <laughs> His real intent was to get a sandwich. And this is a ridiculous example, but it's precisely what you need to understand in order to understand war. Right? In war strategy, the person who holds up this sign is in a lot of trouble because you've bluffed, and your bluff is a bad bluff. You know that um, you, well, you think you're communicating. He doesn't think he's communicating. What he's trying to get is a dollar. Right? In war strategy, what you recognize is a great way to, to make sense of knowledge and what you know. Right? We know, as outsiders, that this is false information, one. We know, two, as outsiders, that he's used this information in order to get money from us. Three, we don't know what his intent is for that money, but we know it's not this. However, we can infer from what he does after the fact what his intent was. We'll never be able to demonstrate it with proof, with absolute certainty, unless we follow him literally. Um, but um, we infer from his actions what his intent was. And I think that is a great template for understanding um, conceptually how the game unfolds. Okay, so the information is obviously private, and I wrote that underneath it. We know that he is not going to use this money to pay for karate lessons. What he will use the money for can only be inferred from his actions after he receives the money, right? So giving him the money is my introduction to the game. Because I want to see, in giving him the money, assuming that I'm going to you know, stake out and see what he does with it, I want to infer, um, as my consequence, his actions. So my giving him the money is my introduction into the game. That's what gets the game started. Without me giving him that money, the game really... Uh, the real game really doesn't get started. Okay. Um, last two points. Um, the application of perfection in private information in the game. So I, I've been talking um, in this lecture about uh, um, private information and this notion of perfection at a decision node. But it seems really, you know, heady. And I wanted to make sure that it was very, very clear. So I constructed scenarios in which I can use the scenarios to explain this idea of both perfection and private information. So let's look at number one. If we know, prior to the start of the game, so prior to the start of the game, if we know that the second party, this party, the second party knows that we, so we're going to be party one, the opposition is going to be party two, so if we know prior, before the start of this game, that the second party um, knows that we typically, historically, do not bluff. Right? There's no bluffing here. Right? There's, there's no bluffing. We say we're going to do it, and we do it. And we know that they know this. We know that they know that when we say we're going to do it, we do it. Um, and they also know that we have superior military capabilities. Right? 
then if we say we are going to engage them if X, Y, Z occurs, right? So if this state of affairs happens, if you do this, we're going to engage you. Then when X, Y, Z occurs, our actions will be perfect, right? If we engage them. So this is reinforced commitment, right? I'm reinforcing my commitment to, um, to support my initial decision, right? Um, the, the sort of colloquial way of saying this is our hands were forced, right? I told them prior to the war that if you invade this neighboring nation, your action is going to be taken as a threat against us if you invade. They know, and I know that they know, that I have a, a track record of when I say I'm going to invade, or if you invade, I'm going to attack. Let's say this happened three or four times in my nation's history in the past then they should be aware that when they do that action, I'm, they're going to suffer the consequences. So, they don't care about um, the fact that I made this claim. They go ahead and they call my bluff. Basically, this is calling my bluff. So they call my bluff because they think I'm really going to do this, right? So they call my bluff, and they invade the, the neighboring nation. Now, what I have to do in order for my action to be perfect, since I said, if you do it, I'm going to attack a conditional, my action is perfect if I actually do it, right? So. Um, then if we say we are going to engage them if X, Y, Z occurs, then when that state of affairs occurs, our actions will be perfect if we follow through with what we said we are going to do. So our perfect action follows from um, the corresponding um, posturing, right? Our, our posturing prior, based on the information that we had, the limited information we had. We knew, however, that if they make this action, that action is going to engage us. They make that action, then I need to engage them. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. The second instance. In instances where temporal factors are observable, so now the, the, the next scenario has to do with a sequence, right? In instances where temporal factors are observable, if we, now we're going to be party two, right? If we, as party two, if we, if we, sorry, sorry, we're party one, if we see party two escalating the conflict, so 2E, 2E, right? 2E is escalating the conflict, this, this or this, right? If we see that party 2 is escalating um, the conflict prior to my, my move, so they, they make the first move, despite their full recognition of our superior military capabilities, right, then we must recognize that there is only, then, that there is some private information they feel justifies their escalation of the conflict, right? What, what, is, what does this mean? Okay. Imagine that in a conflict, right, we have to look at what we've been given. And this was a, a far more complicated. I'll read it slow. In instances where we're talking about sort of a sequence, this happened, then this happened. If we recognize as party one that party two is escalating the conflict prior to our making a decision at all, prior to any action on our part, they start escalating the conflict. Despite the fact that they know that we have, that we beat them out militarily, we have way more firepower than they have. Despite the fact that we have way more firepower than we than they have, which you think you would be able to use deterrence theory, like they're not going to escalate it because they know we got more firepower than them. So why would they be escalating, right? Because they know we have more firepower. So because they know we have more firepower than they do, yet they still escalate the conflict. That action tells us something, right? And I want to make sure that this is clear because it's not easy to understand. Um, that action tells us one of two things. Either they have acquired um, or intend on acquiring some secret weapon. Right? Why would you logically, right? why would you logically escalate the conflict if you know we are a bigger, a bigger military power than you? Right? That wouldn't make sense. Why would you escalate the conflict if you know it's sort of like Jay Z has a line: "Don't bring a, don't bring a, um, bring a knife to a gun." Yeah, bring a knife to a gunfight. I think that's what he says, right? If you know that it's going to be a gunfight, you know that the fight is going to involve guns, why in the world would you come to the fight with a knife? 